Baptist District Family Forum, sharing with you every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock on CBC TV 8. And I hope that you have some time to sit with us for the next half, or half hour as we focus on an area of family life. Um, last week, we talked about engaging the active elderly, and today we want to talk about the care of the elderly, those persons who are not that active, so to speak, the inactive. And uh, again, I have with me my co-host, Evan Kelman. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. And also yes. we have with us back again, Doriel um, Holder. Of course, Doriel is an active member of the Church of Nazarene at Cape Hill, a nurse of 26 years experience principal of the Allied Health Institute, um, involved in the training of nursing auxiliaries the past 21 years. And currently, she's pursuing a diploma in gerontological nursing at the Barbados Community College. So we know that she's well positioned to share with us on this topic, the care of the elderly who are inactive. But that's one to before we get into the heart of a topic, I just want to read um, two a few verses from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5. And um, you would notice that in the following passage, it speaks about widows, but it's not the widows we are talking necessarily about. Not every elderly person is a widow, but it's the concept. So listen carefully to the principles that I mentioned. Give proper recognition. This is um, 1 Timothy 5, from verse 3, 3, and I want to read verse 3 and 4 and verse 8. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these shall learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. Then verse 8, if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I think King James is worse than an infidel. Very, very, very strong words. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Reverend Kelvin, but you got to say a prayer for us before we come out on that a little later. <laughs> be back. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for the ability, Lord, to care for those who may not be as active as they used to be. As the scripture has indicated that's part of our solemn responsibility. And I pray God today as we would have this discussion that indeed you'll birth and also you'll solidify in the minds of, of, of our viewers uh, that important reality, that important responsibility. We give you thanks even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're we'll back with you in a minute. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, it's good to be back with you this evening. Thanks for joining us again for this discussion. I want to again welcome um, Doriel to be a part of our our family forum. Now, we read a bit earlier, uh, and the text reminded us of our responsibility 
in terms of care for the for the elderly, for care for persons or family, and the elderly in particular, as our father would have said. And uh, I would I would just want to challenge us all uh, to take those words to heart because um, it is important for us to be able to give back care to those who care for us, as you were as you as being matured as well. And and this is perhaps one of the important points we're going to be discussing um, this this evening in terms of that whole um, idea of uh, role reversal, you know, um, the carer that becomes the cared for. Mm -hmm. And of course, that creates uh, some, some shifts into the mindset. Uh, of course, it can also be very sensitive because for the person who is, who is aging and who is not as active, for them that could be seen as, as a dereliction of their own responsibility and they may sometimes respond negatively. So, so it's a very sensitive area. And I'm sure that Doris will give us some insight as how we can care for those individuals. Doriel? Thank you, Reverend Kelman. And thanks again, Reverend Farley, for this opportunity to share this evening in this program. Um, just to remind you that last week we would have talked about the active elderly and the mm -hmm. fact that this 2021 to 2030 has been right. declared in, by the United Nations as a decade of healthy aging. Mm -hmm. And uh, suffice it to say that all older adults are not going to age the same way. That's um, right. Mm -hmm. they're, they're individuals and we age differently. Um, sometimes that has a lot to do with our perception of age as well. That's right. You know, it's, mm -hmm. if you think that we're old, maybe we'll act like if we're old. <laughs> but the thing that will happen to us eventually because we are living is that there are going to be changes in our bodies. Yes. Right? And that is something that we have to accept. Um, so... As we focus on the care of the inactive person, or, or we would say the, the ill elderly, mm -hmm. we have to understand that the incidence of sicknesses, diseases, is more prevalent mm -hmm. in elderly persons just because of the act of aging, the yes. changes in the body. Mm -hmm. And it is felt that most elderly persons and most old adults have between one to three chronic conditions, right. things like diabetes and hypertension and, mm -hmm. and poor circulation and even um, what is considered to be one of the, the, the giants, the geriatric giants, dementia. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we have to look at. And obviously there are going to be implications for the changes um, across the lifespan on these older persons. First of all, there's going to be a decrease in the ability to look after themselves. The, the basic, what we call activities of daily living, being able to, to bathe and to dress, you know, and to, to look after themselves personally. And then the, the, the instrumental activities of daily living, the things that, that sometimes we do take for granted, being able to cook for yourself, being able to clean, being able to go to the supermarket and to shop, right? And so you see that aging will affect um, persons and is going to also affect families, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have to look now at how we are going to keep our persons as independent as possible as they're aging. And one of the things is we also need to look at the provision of health services and who pays for those health services. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, as we ourselves are getting older, we need to factor into to our plans retirement mm -hmm. and retirement is not just about not working it's about what am i going to do when i am not actively engaged in a workforce or even in the home setting because everybody does not work outside of mm -hmm. the home mm -hmm. so we have to give um caregivers who are spouses caregivers who are children caregivers who are professionals have to have particular considerations to, to caregiving so that the older persons don't just vegetate, but they can still have a measure of dignity to their lives, even as they're getting older and are encumbered with the, the um, chronic non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, that it's necessary for caregivers to have some kind of training, maybe informal or formal training? Yes. How to take care of? Right. I, I was I was thinking that 
um, caregivers, whether, especially um, family caregivers. Mm -hmm. And that's the concept that, that, that we are now seeing being pushed at the, at the ministry level, right where people in the house can mm -hmm. still be responsible for the elderly persons and get paid for it, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, one of the things that caregivers need to know is to, how much care is necessary, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't want to set yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. You need to know how much care is necessary and be realistic about how much of that care that you can actually mm -hmm. give mm -hmm. yourself. Um, you know, involve more of the family mm -hmm. rather than you trying to take it on yourself, mm -hmm. right? Involve more of the family into the caregiving aspects. Mm -hmm. If you create a list over time and you see what needs to be done and you say, well, maybe my sister can do this better than me or somebody else has more time or whatever mm. and involve people. That, that means then perhaps you should have some family meetings. Yes, yes. Yeah. Family it's meetings. A family. Every now and again to discuss initially so that the word, the load is shared. Yes. Right. And, and I think as well, I have that that needs to occur from the very start of the yes. process. Yes. Because once you begin to, to, to see, to, to, to appear, to be the giant, yeah. Because everything that person yeah. will step back and let you do yeah, it. Yeah. it. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. when I start, at least that needs to happen. So mm -hmm. I agree with one. Uh, and that yes. happens a lot because mm -hmm. you find that, um, especially the females in the family, tend to be the ones who come in and give all the care. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there may just be that one person. Mm -hmm. And that one person is going to suffer some burnout, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And mm -hmm. the care that they're going to be giving now is not going to be as effective as it was mm -hmm. or even as it should, should be. be. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we need to do. And yes, to your point, Reverend Farley, I think that um, even caregivers in the home should have some basic caregiving principles mm. and skills. Yeah. I, I don't want to yes. sound the warning though, um, Doriel, that I have seen over the years many persons who, because of the giving care, are being stressed out. Mm -hmm. Actually died before the person yes. they were giving care to. Mm -hmm. So so it's a it's a fairly uh, significant issue mm -hmm. and one that we have to find uh, the right balance, balance. Um, right. even in terms though of you know, when it becomes necessary, I, I, I like the idea of, of home care mm -hmm. because persons, you know, are in their, in their environment that they yes. know yes. and they feel that makes for much yes. longer. And, and, and persons that they yes, know they as know, well. So yeah. that's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but there comes a time when uh, persons have to acknowledge that, you know, um, care from home mm -hmm. may, no, may no longer be the best Thing for this. Because they may need professional yeah. I have wanted to care. Come on that though, mm -hmm. girl, because I know there's a lot, of, a lot of sadness and mm -hmm. guilt, mm -hmm. and uh, so it feels of betrayal. I betray my mom or my, yes. or my dad. Yes. I put them in care. I'll I, I, I let her come back to that in a minute. Okay, all right. Because we have a little short break here. Okay. Um, viewers, we'll be back with you in a minute. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you, viewers. And uh, of course, when we broke, that's now, um, Dory was making a point. You want to continue? Um, in one of the things that, in terms of caregiving, when we look at, at spouses, we know that a part of the marriage voices in sickness <laughs> and in health. Mm -hmm. But realistically, people don't look down the road, yeah. right? They're only thinking about the now, maybe the children, but not to mm -hmm. the grand and the great grand mm -hmm. section of it. And you find that sometimes when when the, the the spouse whether that's the husband or the wife gets ill then that person now has to change their role from simply being a husband or wife mm -hmm. to a caregiver mm -hmm. something that they didn't bargain for yes. something that they didn't they plan for, for or plan for they didn't expect and even sometimes think that you know there's not what they signed up for mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i remember and as christians we have to be very careful about what we say and how we say and things we do but i remember reading where a, a minister said that uh if his wife has dementia that's grounds for divorce 
because that's not what he wow. signed up for. Wow. That's, that, harsh. that's a hard thing. Yes. Because harsh. we have to realize that mm -hmm. there there is going to be an emotional impact yeah. when the roles are changed. Mm -hmm. When you married somebody and they were nice and young and healthy and you had all of these plans, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden now mm -hmm. you have to be lifting them in and out of a bed and mm -hmm. bathing them and changing them and feeding them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people get anxious yeah. and they get depressed. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they may feel resentment, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. for, for having these role changes. Yeah. And then they, they're guilty because mm -hmm. of the feelings mm -hmm. that they have. Yeah. Also, they think about the, the changes in, the, in their social lives. Mm -hmm. They don't go anymore. Yeah. They don't do the things, you know, we were so looking forward to retirement and we were going to sail the seven seas and do all of these things that we, we didn't get to do because we were, mm -hmm. you know, building a family yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now they're mm -hmm. stuck yeah. with, with uh, uh, a, ill, sil, uh, as a, ill. a ill person, yeah. right? I would, and I it would, affects them physically Yeah, I, I as want well. to um, share a, a quotation here mm -hmm. which kind of crystallizes what you're saying mm -hmm. um, from a group of authors Family Therapy Networker, um, a magazine, um, February and January 1993 edition. And it made a statement about illness. Illness can be like a terrace hmm. who appears on the doorstep, barges inside the house, demands everything the family possesses in terms of time, energy, stability, well-being, and money. It seems harsh it, to it say that impact. illness is like a terrace. Mm -hmm. You want that? It's Talking about that, really. I, okay. but two, but, but I, I want to go back to what you said earlier, uh, though, mm -hmm. in terms of the how do we navigate that 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 in care uh, transition? So so you know, care for for mom or dad or has a wife at home, but then they become more and more ill. Mm -hmm. how, how do how do we navigate the emotions? Um, when the time comes for placing them in care, any pointers, any suggestions how they can for being guilty, feeling feel guilty. guilty mm -hmm. Well, as I said earlier, if you if you know what is involved, right. and then you are able to 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 make a decision as to how much you are capable of doing, that's right. very important right. because. Uh, I remember way back uh, at high school, we did this book, and it says that fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to know what is wrong to be able to know what must be done and mm -hmm. also what we are capable of mm -hmm. doing. So we have to be, so so caregivers at home have to be able to find that balance. Mm -hmm. right? but, but sometimes you have a situation where the society, okay, Martel, Imagine he has means, um, his wife can help, but they're going to take their mom and put her yeah, in the arms of us. So, society, how we view the whole society, view what we do. And sometimes that impacts on whether we do it or not. Yeah. But then how do you navigate that? But then, wherever I think that we're going to have to be more practical and yeah. realistic, because at the end of the day, it is not, it is not the society that is going to be in this house with you. Mm -hmm. Right? They, they're, they're going to be on the sidelines and they're criticized. What you do, what you don't do, but you still have to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. So so another thing that, that the elderly persons as persons can do as they're getting older is to make some of those decisions for themselves mm -hmm. before the eventuality. Right. So I'm saying I'm saying like I always say to my to my children and, and I, if they're watching TV, they know I've said this already. <laughs> I'm going to go live at my son when I get old. Mm -hmm. You told them that? I've, I've told them that. Yeah. And sometimes, though, and sometimes, though, sometimes, though, the, the, the adjustment, though, for the older people is, is difficult, too. Yes, it is. You yes, know, it is. And, and that also adds to, to that sense of, of sadness and consternation that the, that the child may feel in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a senior care mm -hmm. <clears throat> environment. And, and I like what you said, though, and, and I say it this way give persons what they need not what they want, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they may want to stay at home, but you know that, you know, if you don't be careful, it's not in the best you'll, you'll come home and, and don't see them. Right. I'm not, not sure where they are. What may happen is that it will burn you out yes. and burn them out. And, and, and they can, they can so do we that. don't have neither. 
Right, so I mean, in terms of things that Alzheimer's, but you walk yeah. away from home, yes. you can't find them. It's happened. You know? yeah. It's so, happened. So I, I think that's, that's, that's a and, prime and then And then the guilt from that yeah, is, going, is going mm -hmm. to be greater. Right. Yeah. right, so we need to consider mm -hmm. what must be done and how to do it. And then there's a the concept of what we call respite care. Right. Sometimes you, you're looking after your elderly in, in the home, but you need to take a break. Yes. And there are, there are facilities out there, there are nursing homes out there, senior citizens' homes out there, who will take your elderly person for two three or three weeks. Mm -hmm. They give you that vacation right. mm -hmm. so that you can regroup and, you yeah. know, Excellent. come back and get some strength for yourself mm -hmm. to be able to... But is that, is that well known? Um, and I'm not... Yes, because the, the nursing homes, the senior citizens' homes in Barbados do mm -hmm. advertise yeah. that. But I, why I say that yes. is that more often than not, persons think if I have to go to a home, it's going to be for a, a, long, long, a long period. But mm -hmm. I cannot have, I suppose I'm going, even going overseas, I cannot leave my elderly relative there for three weeks. You That's can't right. leave them in the house alone. Right? Yeah, I know and that. But what may happen me. is that I would not go overseas. Go overseas. Oh. Right. And, and that's, yes, and that's that the point. That you don't have to go overseas. You just, you just take a break. But, but in case I wanted, right. in case I wanted yeah. to. But that's the issue, though. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it ties back to the issue of guilt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, I think one of the things that we, we said earlier, um, if you have to kind of reinforce, is that even though you're caring for the elderly folk, you still must live as well. Yes. Right? And, yes. Find that balance. And you've got to figure out the balance. And if it means, you know, taking mom or dad to respite care, you know, mm -hmm. to the care so you can have a, mm -hmm. a, some time off yes. to travel overseas to visit, mm -hmm. you know, a friend or, yes. or loved ones, then, yes. then, then you must really do that because mm -hmm. that keeps you in good psychological nick. Even yeah, come back to help. It, yeah. it, it charges yeah. you back up. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing which I want to mention very quickly. Before, before, you, before you go, Reverend Kevin, so how about when I go overseas, though? But I call them back every <laughs> two hours no. to find out how no, they are. No. It's that, 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 I, I just thought that. You, yeah. you are feeling guilty yeah, yeah, yeah. about so, even your right. respect right. here. Right. So, 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 so you're working on yourself. You don't manage that. And, and I mean, you're laughing at me. I spent three weeks. I spent three weeks, but I called back about 50 times. I can give you so many examples of that. Where persons felt so... Um, so tight to the person giving care to yeah. because of guilt issues yeah. that, um, I mean, they themselves found themselves yeah. got, got very ill. Yes. But the other point which I want to kind of make, <coughs> though, and do a, do a reflection on it, has to do with the, 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 the elderly person being lonely. Mm -hmm. And looking from the perspective that I'm told if you live long enough, if you, if you this were alone, if you live long enough, the chance that you'll be alone as well, too. Because mm -hmm. all your friends be the day around you, the person you've lived with for many years, you know. Um, how, 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 do, how do you manage that and be care for those early persons as they go through that type of loss? Like, Come know? back, Lonnie, next. Well, that, that, is, that is a reality yeah. because um, you would find that part of the culture of older adults True. is that they listen to the deaf announcements. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that they are listening to the deaf announcements to paint themselves? mean that they are not themselves dead. <laughs> and they go to funerals. And yes, they, 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 they get married and they lose their spouses mm -hmm. and, they, and, and the children move away and they get the em emptiness syndrome and they get mm -hmm. old and they're there by themselves. So yes, they, they're grieving. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important then for the children to maintain the contacts mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. to call them, to check upon mm -hmm. them, to visit even, mm -hmm. not, not just call, but to visit. So what about, what about also industry, right. um, apart from relatives, friendships? Right. So your, 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 your relatives might have lived the island, but you have friends, right. church friends, church friends. co-workers, mm -hmm. you know? So, so we, we cannot be simply concentrating only on family. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to have friendships. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things, um, one of the theories of aging is that persons naturally withdraw from society mm -hmm. after a certain mm -hmm. age. And maybe that is something that we foster in Barbados. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear people say, when I get a certain age, I'm done with, you know? Yes, yes. And, and then, and, and because they're not actively engaged, mm -hmm. then they really do get yes. ill. Mm -hmm mentally as well as physically. Mm -hmm. So I think that what, as a church, being being a, a, a big part of the society can do, as you would have said before, is have things in place 
right? And have teams that can go and visit, mm -hmm. have activities for these elderly persons to be mm -hmm. involved in. Mm -hmm. Because when they when they when you step out of your circumstance and yourself and you see other people and you're able to offer them help and assistance mm -hmm. and yeah. mentor, right? Mm -hmm. and, and get involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going to go back home, but when you go back home now, you can reflect on the things that you would have done during the course of the day. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're not as lonely as you mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Get a pet, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. See, the, the old thing that we used to do where everybody was involved, we, mm -hmm. we, we are missing that. We are missing that, and it's to our detriment. Mm -hmm. Great. So the, we sometimes so you can, sometimes too, we can also play with it. Play with the grandchildren. Yes. Children yes. come over and tell them stories. Yes. The neighbor's children. Yeah. Yes. But I, I suppose though the whole grandchildren thing, it will have to be a case where while you were, well, active, that there was yes. a relationship. Yes. You can't just turn up now. <laughs> I, 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 what I would say too is that it's important to, relationship. to, to, to keep relationships going. Yes. You know, um, yes. because sometimes persons, you know, um, the the grouses and, and, and family conflicts that mm -hmm. are not resolved. Yes. Part. Because, but it Important. Was, it was a bit more, more <laughs> final point, though. And it has to do, I, I know that this may not be um, a part of, of our focus, but a few years ago, we, we at, our, at, our, at our local church, we, we looked at the whole idea of having a nursing care mm -hmm. uh, for some of our senior folk. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't come off then, but the idea is not yet. Idea has not died. Yeah, and, and and I think though that that when the church came, a daycare also, kind of setting, it's a concert daycare setting for, yes. for the seniors. Mm -hmm. But also maybe if churches can afford it, mm -hmm. um, find some so, so, some a care facility yes. where the, the senior folk can go mm -hmm. um, and 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 be with persons that they know. Yeah. So rather to give to some so very very strange, yeah, all strangers, uh, yeah. persons that they know. So 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 they mm -hmm. they, 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 they worship together. Yeah. As as young people, as as adults, you know, mm -hmm. as as active um, seniors, but as they get inactive, mm -hmm. they also are with those same people and that they form and um, build, build relations with. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so maybe that's something we can do as a church as well, yeah. look at yes. how we can facilitate mm -hmm. um, that kind of, of, yeah. of uh, situation. Well, I, I know that we can, there's so much more we can say, but um, again, I'm gonna give you a chance to give the final words. Um, we obviously didn't talk a lot about preparing for death. Um, that is always a, a touchy topic, <laughs> but it does come. And writing wills too. Huh? Yes. Writing wills, you know. I mean, part of your yes. Plan. Yeah, not writing wills because yes. persons don't want to write wills because yes. it, it's all saying uh, not to commit part before already. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, but we know of several cases where that has not ha has where wills have not been written, and once the person has passed, real problems, real problems for the real family problems, behind. Real problems. Yeah, but so, a closing word from you. Um, all right, this has, this has been an interesting discussion, and I want to, we talked about um, role reversals and how people can find balance and, and be able to better care for the inactive elderly, but then sometimes it comes to the point where you have to make that decision that mm -hmm. you need some help, yes. and professional help is available. Mm -hmm. um, most of the times... If persons are in their home, they wouldn't need a registered nurse, mm -hmm. but they can use nursing auxiliaries. Okay. But I want to, to let the public know that the nursing auxiliaries must be trained mm -hmm. and they must be certified, mm -hmm. or not certified, sorry, registered mm -hmm. with the Nursing Council of Barbados. Mm -hmm. And they must be supervised mm -hmm. because there's some, whilst they may be able to bathe and comb hair and stuff like that, mm -hmm. when, it, when, when that person gets ill, mm -hmm. there needs to be somebody who can make an assessment of mm -hmm. that and be able to give professional judgment. Yes. So 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 you want you don't want to just get the person from next door, mm -hmm. although they may be a good and a caring yes. person, yeah. but you want I mean, somebody skills. that is skilled and mm -hmm. caring and yeah. compassionate yeah. and supervised. Yeah. So so the nursing auxiliaries must be supervised according to the laws of Barbados by registered nurses, not mm -hmm. meaning that they have to be there, but they must be available for consultation. Well, um, Doriel, thank you so much. I, I'll give you the privilege of giving us the closing prayer. <laughs> we thank you all for this opportunity to speak about things that concern us, not only as a nation, but as a church and as individuals. We pray that everything that we said and 
today, dear God, will bring honor and glory to your name and somebody will benefit from these conversations that we would have had. We pray that you will bless Reverend Kelman and bless Reverend Farley and the District Church of the Nazarene as we seek to engage the family in our discussion so that as Christians, we can live better and more productive lives and be better citizens of our lives. So continue to be with us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Viewers, God bless you.